morning gorgeous ones i hope you're having a great uh friday it's a beautiful morning here i cannot wait to get out and uh, go for a, a beautiful morning walk as well so jumping into today's video um about feeling overly responsible and uh this honestly has been a really, really strong theme in my own life. And I think um, the more that we get to understand this within ourselves and identify this within ourselves, um, then the less that you'll actually notice that this kind of plays out for you. So one of the main things um, that really happens when we are feeling this sense of over responsibility is number one, fatigue. Um, hey, Sherry, great to have you on, hun. Um, it is definitely um, a sense of fatigue and a sense of feeling weighted down by the world. Now, um, one of the reasons why we can often feel like this is, and, and you'll know this uh, to be true for yourself, is if you are particularly sensitive to other people's energies and uh, can be one of those things as well that um, as we're moving throughout the world, as we're experiencing our day-to-day -day life or even, um, you know, from our family or from um, our work situation or employment or perhaps you have uh, your own business, all of these things, they play out in such an, uh, a, a powerful way when we're actually not fully conscious of it and also know actually how to handle this as well. So say good morning if you're jumping on here. Uh, for some reason, Facebook's not letting me see who's jumping on, so I can't actually say good morning. Um, but lovely to have you guys on. Um, so definitely... Uh, number one thing why I want to, why I'm really passionate about sharing this is it can be a huge source of burnout and frustration and also resentment in relationships. Um, and it can really, um, I guess, like one of the other mechanisms that I see as a spin-off of feeling overly responsible for others is the need to try and either fix, rescue, um, or control others. Now, when I say control, most people don't like hearing that word and go, no, no, I'm not controlling. Um, um, and you know, again, I'll put both my hands up. You know, I've done this in all of my relationships multiple times, uh, and it's just be about becoming more human and very, very aware um, and and more conscious about this as well is really, really important. Hey, Davo, great to have you on. Hey, Tracy, great to have you on. And so, when this is actually really playing out, guys, like I said, you're going to feel overly responsible. You may experience a lot of feelings of guilt as well. Um, these, uh, you know, guilt can play out in a massive role with this um, and I know one of my biggest beliefs and send me some love if this resonates for you hey Rod great to have you on um, is you know I can't be happy until everybody else is happy or and so we end up in this kind of like push-pull dynamic where we feel quite defensive or we might feel like we're justified in our actions or well it's not fair that they're doing that because we get so tired of actually feeling that heavy weight of feeling responsible for others or feeling that we need to be constantly taking care of others or even worse still and I see this play out for a lot of mums and um, I know that this is more than likely true from a man's perspective as well I'm not a man I can't speak from that perspective um, <laughs> I, I have worked with um, a quite a lot of male clients though in terms of um, coaching and so I guess I can speak from that perspective where this does play out for men as well where they do feel this sense of obligation this sense of duty this sense of feeling like they need to take care of everybody and and often it does leave the person completely depleted. Um, and the real spin-off from this, hey Nicole, hey Roz, lovely to have you on, hey Sandra. The real spin-off from this, guys, is um, quite damaging in that it makes us kind of want to push away from other people or feel like other people or um, relationships are draining or and it leaves us feeling um, a little bit alone internally as well when we're carrying that massive big burden um, and we're actually not taking responsibility uh, nine times out of ten for ourselves. It's kind of like we, we disown the self-responsibility and become overly responsible for everybody else. And in a way, um, I've been doing some great work um, through the artist's uh, way. It's a, it's an incredible book. It's actually like a 12 week course, but compiled in a book. Um, very, very, very powerful, very confronting um, with some of the, the crap basically that comes up um, and in, in getting to look at some of these things that go on and part of diminishing our creativity or 
a way of protecting ourselves from like really going for it in life and really creating a life that we love and having these amazing desires, a way that we actually block ourselves through unconscious undeserving or feeling that um, you know we either can't do that or we have a fear of failure or a fear of success or fear of losing people is by pouring so much time and energy into other people. Now, another way that this has also been imprinted is also through our conditioning. So um, I certainly know, you know, I can relate very heavily to um, needing to be the good girl, needing to be the pleaser, needing to make other people happy because I got a lot of reward for that. I got a lot of um, appreciation. I got noticed. I got validated um, when I was helping out, when I was doing great things. Now, that's not to say, um, you know, I, I was very, very blessed and I grew up in a very loving household. Um, that's not to say like my parents got that wrong. However, when we become so externally validated in terms of we don't know how to love ourself and so that is part of how we actually get hooked into feeling overly responsible or we've got to make everybody else happy around us because when we do that we get valued or we get noticed or we get appreciated and I think that this is one of the main things certainly from um, society's perspective as well is that so much of our value has been tied in unconsciously um, to our like and our, our self-worth and our, our sense of value in the world is how much we do for others um, and how kind and how loving we are or how generous we are and all of those things I'm not dissing any of those things it's just you cannot give from an empty bucket um, hey Tanya great to have you on and when we're attempting to give from an empty bucket that is where we will absolutely deplete ourselves, and that's where we end up in a lot of burnout where we've not been conscious of either a how depleted we are because we've been so consumed with everybody else's needs and what everybody else is going on for everybody else and it can lead definitely into codependency type patterns um, where we forget who we are we forget what's important to us we forget what those dreams or goals are or perhaps you're acutely aware of them and you keep getting taken off agenda by everybody else's needs and so this is incredibly frustrating and can be a way that we kind of like like I said before are self-sabotaging or blocking our own creativity um, through a way that seems genuine <laughs> you know it's not like we're just sitting on the couch and going oh well I'm just gonna like um, binge these and watch Netflix and I'm not gonna write the book or I'm not gonna do the thing or I'm not gonna build the business or I'm not gonna do any of that stuff and no judgment if <laughs> you know if you've done any of the other as well um, I, I know what it's like to experience some of those creative blocks or perhaps some of those deeper fears that can come up and it does take true courage and this is one of these things with being overly responsible um, we are creating our life all the time and if you've got a lot of people that are depending on you personally um, and uh, I talk a lot about this in like the quadrants if you haven't checked out the four quadrants by uh, Stephen Covey he talks a lot about that in quadrant three quadrant three is um, when other people's emergencies become our urgencies and that's where you know we might have uh, the girlfriend that phones us up at the last second and says oh I haven't organized a sitter can you have the kids for me and you would had this beautiful morning planned or it might be um, that uh, you know work wise like you've got your schedule laid out and you're allowing all of these other urgencies and things come in now some of those might be quite legitimate um, I always used to have a rule with my kids come and speak to me if you're bleeding a lot <laughs> apart from that this is my time and I would have to be very very clear about that and sometimes that can be associated with a lot of guilt or be deemed selfish however I couldn't have built my business and the financial stability that I've been able to for my family without having those clear boundaries and if you think about anybody um, that you know like is successful in any particular area of life you'll notice it's because they a have a high level of mastery B have a high level of focus and C have very clear boundaries on on their time often very successful people have a number of gatekeepers so people that actually guard their time guard their appointments um, like there's less and less access to be able to get to somebody simply because they know that doing the thing or bringing that creative spark or building their business or um, you know whatever that is is the correct and right thing for them and they can do that and they know that when they do that they contribute to the world in a really powerful and amazing incredible unique way um, 
And we're all designed to do that. We're all designed to bring whatever it is on our heart, in our energy, um, forth from that as well. So, hey, Mandy. Hey, Vanny. Great to have you on. Um, hey, Zanette. Great to have you on as well. So, the, the key thing with the overly responsible is, do you experience a lot of guilt? Like, are you suffering like a lot of guilt or feeling bad for your choices or feeling, um, and of course, like guilt can serve on a number of levels. Guilt sometimes is actually a really good indicator of, hey, there's something that I'm really valuing here that I am ignoring. So I know like if I feel guilty that I haven't spent time or the, like time that I'm really wanting to or that my girls are really wanting me to, that's something I really value, but I don't have to swim in the guilt. I don't have to live in the guilt. I can create an amazing strategy and have a conversation with my kids, book in a time. And you know, when I say book in a time, they're 17 and 19 now, so it's not like they're five and six, but even when they were little, I asked them, what do you need from me in order to feel loved? What blocks of time do we actually need? And in my head, I was swimming in guilt because I believed that I should have had three hours every afternoon of quality time with my kids and I was a single mom I was running my own business and literally it was doing my head in I would go to bed feeling guilty and beating up on myself feeling so terrible every day even though like I was totally rocking it as a mom um, unbeknownst to me when I checked in with my kids and they're like 30 minutes of an afternoon mom like that's all we and I'm like really that's all you need and they're like yeah and a couple of blocks of two or three hours on the weekend that 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 would be great um, and it's like wow okay so this is where like unconsciously if we're being overly responsible and we're not communicating effectively um, to everybody around us then that is like really 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 important um, and will again you know it comes back to this ability to be able to communicate effectively hey Marty hey Laura hey Dion great to have you on hey Chris lovely to see you guys on here um, so really understanding how this actually plays out for you. For me, I get like this, it's a really weird sensation. Um, I get a cloudy head um, when I'm feeling guilty or feeling um, ashamed or um, a sense of shame or feeling um, just this like this weighted heaviness of feeling overly responsible for others. Now, like I said, if you are overly sensitive, if you are empathic um, or relate to or resonate with, you know, the word um, empathy um, in terms of you have a strong sense of what other people are feeling around you, you will be more inclined to do this very subconsciously or perhaps automatically um, without actually even having awareness of it and it's like I said it can be subtle at times um, where you find yourself feeling bad for making a great choice for yourself and that's not to say that we're dismissive of what other people's needs are or you know or the way that we can impact others with our words we still want to bring love and compassion and all of that to the forefront but until we actually give ourselves permission to fill ourselves up first and to give from the overflow, you'll always be spinning in resentment. And for me, like resentment and anger, they are like red flags to me and saying, hey, your bucket is low. You need to get some time for you, girl, or you need to take care of yourself in some way, shape or form. Because basically anger is an indication of a boundary um, that has been, and sometimes these are unconscious boundaries, um, where it's just like, I'm so stretched right now, I've got nothing left. Um, and it's not until like you really, um, and I used to be in this crazy cycle of like I would go into guilt and then I would feel bad and I would feel unworthy and so, so then I would overgive, overcompensate um, in relationships and then I'd feel resentment and I'd feel anger. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, some of you may uh, relate to this. I know when I've shared this with particular clients, they're like, oh my God, that's my pattern. Um, and go into anger and then finally get so tired of feeling angry and pissed at the world and then I'd go into being a victim um, and feeling like this victim, like everybody's doing this, or everybody wants all this stuff from me. And then um, finally get so tired and exhausted from that, I would hit the reset button, have a look at what I'm doing and go, oh shit, I've just ran that pattern again. Um, and actually then take time to replenish. Now, I have great conscious awareness around this pattern now and I actually literally had it written across my bathroom mirror because I was living it on, on such a regular, in such a regular way and it was really, like painful and horrible um, and wasn't supportive of any relationships either um, sorry I'm getting lots of messages coming through so um, 
And one of the ways to really exit out of this is just to notice, oh shit, I'm in that pattern and be able to make a new conscious choice. What do I need to do in order to free myself or resolve this now? Um, so simple and easy, like you get to exit the pattern at any point as well. Um, but one of the key things, like particularly with this overly responsible thing, um, is understanding what are the underlying beliefs that are actually holding this pattern in place. And often we've taken those things in uh, through imprinting, through conditioning, through our parents um, as a young child remember from zero to seven um, we receive all of those messages very hypnotically um, and can be really really challenging for us um, you know when we're taking that in as well and um, because we don't have an analytical mind it's not until eight or nine where we start to analyze what people are saying to us and is that correct for us is that okay and by then generally we have become so associated with believing the truth of everybody else around us and often they've been imprinted and conditioned by their parents like it's generational and lineage stuff as well that kind of plays through and comes through on this level um, so one of the greatest things is definitely understanding hey how is this playing out for me how am I actually feeling in my body do I feel burdened do I feel weighed down and um, quite often when I'm working with people hey Jay it's great to have you on um, quite often when I'm working with people you know I'll get this sensation or I'll get this visual image of literally you know they're carrying all of these sleepers because they believe that they're overly responsible or that they need to be taking care of everybody else first. Um, and it's actually draining their life force energy. It's actually draining um, the energy that they have to repair, to rejuvenate, to restore themselves, um, to feel good about life, to be able to bring their goals and dreams into fruition. And guys, honestly, it is a downward, downward spiral. And it's one of the key things that I address in my new program um, that I've just uh, launched recently, which I'm really excited about, which is called Thrive. And it's really like it's a, um, an incredible program that looks at all of those four aspects of our body. So physically, mentally, emotionally, and also spiritually or that connection to self if you don't resonate with the word spiritual. Um, but it really is that deeper connection to self and what do I want? Who am I? What's important to me? Um, because if you are particularly open in your energy, meaning you take in other people's energy, you feel other people's energy very, very strongly and you're overly sensitive, um, or I don't like to use that word. I, I felt like I got told that I was overly sensitive as a child. It's now my greatest gift when I work with people. Um, you know, you're too sensitive or don't take that so, so seriously. And it's just like, it's hard not to when you are sensitive right you're sensitive to everything like your environment who you're with what their energy's like um, even you know different foods and things like that so um, but if you do feel that you are extra sensitive or that you've got some of that going on please message me send me um, a message let's have a conversation um, because it's so 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 important when this plays out for a lifetime guys um, it often leaves us feeling very very unfulfilled um, we don't have satisfying relationships it means Meaning, you know, the relationships are one-sided, they're not mutually beneficial or they're not synergistic. Sometimes a relationship can be truly um, synergistic, even though it appears very one-sided and that might be somebody that's um, in a wheelchair and they have a partner that's a full-time carer. Now that would appear that, that uh, the full-time carer is, you know, giving a lot more. However, that might light their heart up, that might feel like absolutely the joy and what's correct for them and what's right for them. However, if it's somebody else that's doing it out of obligation um, or feeling, you know, this sense of duty or they have to or they need to or they should, again, that is not going to be a synergistic relationship and um, will lead generally a lot of these resentments and anger um, ends up causing a, such a strong feeling of sense of separation. They create a lot of incoherence in the body, in the physical energy of the body and cause a lot of inflammation in raised cortisol levels. When there's inflammation in the body, um, a lot of the, the big diseases, so your top three diseases, whether it's cardiovascular, cancer, osteoporosis, diabetes, obesity, all of those things get driven up certainly um, just through the energetic way that we're actually experiencing life because when you're experiencing those like that that emotion of stress or that emotion of resentment or that emotion of anger um, it will be impacting your health because biologically biochemically your body is responding to that and it's sending out all of these stress signals 
signals saying, oh my God, we're in fight flight now. Um, we're not gonna survive. And it feels like this ongoing sense of survival for a long time. And if ever you've been, you know, you've had a couple of um, babies, like if you're women, you know, um, quite quickly, like in terms of, you know, um, two or three years, I've never had the experience of having children further apart in terms of like five year gaps or anything like that. But even just having one newborn baby, you know, there's a lot of giving, therefore there needs a lot of replenishing. And if that's happening over a long period of time, um, then, you know, again, we need to make sure that we're not falling into that resentment and anger and just feel like a hamster on the treadmill that we can't really get off as well. It's um, very detrimental to our well-being. Hey, Rob, great to have you on. Hey, Anne-Marie, lovely to see you on here. Um, so, so important, guys, to really just, A, be consciously aware of it, B, know that you can exit the pattern at any point um, by asking yourself some brilliant questions, um, and C, just know that, like, if this has been a lifetime theme for you, um, and I certainly resonate um, with that with myself, and it's something I have to be acutely, consciously aware of, um, but this is all about what I address in my new Thrive program as well. Um, it really does, you know, it brings in a great a state of joy, a greater state of like feminine energy, a greater state of flow. We address, uh, you know, functional testing and looking at your body and, uh, you know, what's happening metabolically for you. Um, we address, um, you know, the, uh, the emotional and the mental kind of things that are going on there. So what's playing out for you um, mentally? So what thoughts are you believing? Like, I can't be happy until everybody else is happy or um, I've just got to take care of everyone and everything. Um, and you'll feel the load of those statements as I say them, you know, weighing you down um, simply because like we're actually not designed to be responsible <laughs> for everybody else and everyone. Um, so, 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 so important. Hey, Rage, great to have you on. Um, so, so important guys. So sending you all lots of love. Like I said, reach out to me if you've noticed this as a strong theme or as a strong pattern in your own life. Um, very important to take care of this. Uh, like I said, it does lead to higher levels of cortisol, um, weight gain, uh, inflammation in the body and all sorts of stuff kind of playing out long term if this is actually not dealt with. And uh, quite often I also see that this is the one big key thing that actually prevents so many um, business owners from being able to move to that next level um, of what they're wanting to create or generate for themselves that way as well. Because often if they're feeling overly responsible for everybody, they're, they're so busy taking care of everybody that they're actually not working on the most important thing in order to move their business forward in a powerful way. So sending you guys loads of love. Uh, please share or like, love or share. Um, if this has been valuable for you or you have some people in your life that you absolutely love and you know that this plays out for them without obviously pointing the finger um, or you know it could be valuable for them in any way have a brilliant and amazing day guys and like I said if this resonates for you at all please feel free to reach out let's have a conversation um, it's really really important and I know often um, with this particular thing often people can feel um, very alone internally because often they feel that the people around them aren't even aware of this is actually how they feel. And so it can feel like a lonely journey. You are not alone. Um, definitely reach out to me. Let's have a conversation and uh, we can go from there. Have an amazing day. Lots of love to you. Bye.